Okay. Our next presenter B19, Dr. Sarita Sivarajan. Formative assessment to initiate personalized learning in teaching orthodontic wire bending. Dr. Sarita, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Okay, we can. Uh, have you switched on your video? Yes, I did. Can you see my slide? Uh, okay, you, not yet. Have you shared it? Have you shared your slide? Yes, I did. Okay, okay, we can see it now. Right. Okay, good, good. You All may right. start. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Chairperson. A very good evening to honourable judges and all the audience. I am Dr. Sarita Sivarajan, and today I would like to share my team's research entitled Formative Assessment to Initiate Personalised Learning in Teaching Orthodontic Wire Bending. These are my team members, and I would like to acknowledge the entire Department of Orthodontic from Faculty of Dentistry, as all the 11 orthodontists was involved in this research as we did it as our department project. This is the outline of my presentation for today. Ladies and gentlemen, in some dental school, undergraduate students are taught wire bending to train their manual dexterity. Traditionally, live video demonstration was used as a sole teaching method until recently, either live video demonstration or flipped classroom teaching are being employed. According to Parker et al. 1999, live demonstration method can increase students' confidence, improve communication skill, and provide better understanding as compared to didactic teaching. However, it has also been associated with factors that reduce teaching effectiveness, such as restricted view, limited repeatability and burden of manpower. Safe Classroom provides a flexible platform for self-paced learning, which helps the students to improve their learning interests. Thus, it enhances personalized learning by allowing students to assess resources to learn at their own preferred phase, way, and also location. Meanwhile, continuous formative assessment can be used as a systematic approach for personalized learning. This allows monitoring of students' progress and enhances learning by enabling students to identify their strengths and weaknesses. It also enables the teachers to identify students who are struggling early in the course and thus addressing their learning need without a delay. Thus, the aim of this study was to evaluate the effect of live demonstration and flipped classroom teaching method supplemented with continuous formative assessment on dental students' performance in bending six type of wire component for removable orthodontic appliances. We have four objectives for this study. Our first objective is to compare the students' orthodontic wire bending score between the live demonstration and also the flipped classroom teaching method. Second, we want to analyze the association of continuous formative assessment with orthodontic wire bending scores for the both cohort over a six wire bending exercises. Thirdly, we would like to investigate the frequency and also correlation of usage of online video demonstration with students' orthodontic wire bending score. Lastly, we compare the students' perceived satisfaction on wire bending demonstration for both cohorts. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's move on to material and method. This was a prospective study conducted at Faculty of Dentistry, University of Malaya, Malaysia from October 2019 to February 2020. Ethical approval was obtained from Medical Ethics Committee, Faculty of Dentistry, University of Malaya. The entire class of 43rd year undergraduate dental students in 2019 with no previous exposure to orthodontic wire bending were randomly assigned to either live demonstration or flip classroom cohort. For both cohort, the skills of wire bending were taught in a standardized manner with identical steps and standardized rubrics for each wire bending. They were taught to bend six wire components of a removable appliances, which are the Adam class, buckle canal retractor, palatal finger spring, Z spring, southern, and also a holly labial bow. After each type of wire bending task, formative assessment was undertaken. A validated self-reported questionnaire was distributed to the students after submission of the first wire bending and also the last wire component, which was T0 and T1 respectively. 
audience. I will explain details on formative assessment and also the questionnaire in my subsequent slide. Before that, I would like to explain to you how we conducted the live demonstration and also the flip classroom cohort. The live demonstration was conducted by calibrated technician with 10 students encircling each technician in the presence of a lecturer. Students are free to ask questions during the live demonstration and the technician repeated the wire bending steps whenever necessary. The live demonstration students were given a week to fabricate and submit the wire bending product for a blinded quality assessment followed by a summative uh, followed by a formative assessment. Meanwhile, for the flip classroom cohort, the demonstration video for all the six wire were pre-recorded by the same calibrated technician who conducted the live demonstration. The flip classroom demonstration video were posted on Spectrum. The flip classroom group members actually had a week to view the video and practice wire bending prior to their in-class teaching session. During the in-class teaching sessions, the students actually supposed to apply the knowledge that they comprehend from watching the videos and submit a wire bending product for blinded quality assessment at the end of the teaching session. And this was similarly followed by a formative assessment. This is the flow chart of our study and you can see that for each of the demonstration, for each type of wire, the live demonstration session was actually scheduled a week earlier than the flipped classroom. And this is to avoid the exposure of flipped teaching videos. As part of the continuous assessment, the scores and marking rubrics for each type of wires as shown here, we have six types of rubrics. And this marking score and sheets were actually returned to the students with their scores in it. So those students who actually scored below 60%, they are considered failed. And a 60% passing grade was set as an indicator to minimally knowledge and skill required to fabricate orthodontic wire bending. The feedbacks was actually also given to the students, to the technician and also to the lecturers prior to the next teaching session. This enabled the students to ascertain their knowledge process and use this opportunity to improve where necessary in the upcoming teaching session. Meanwhile, the teachers monitored closely the students who scored below par in the subsequent session. This was repeatedly similar repeatedly for all the six types of the wire component. Next, in terms of the questionnaire, a validated self-reported questionnaire adapted from Lao et al. 2019 was used to assess the student's perception and satisfaction towards the learning experience. The questionnaire consisted of a demographic question followed by 29 item groups under six domains, which is the infrastructure and material provided. Second, demonstration method. Third, teaching method. Fourth, wire bending task. Fifth, te teaching efficiency. Six, overall satisfaction. Responses were recorded using a five point Likert scale, where a score one was given for strongly agree and five for strongly disagree. T1 questionnaire, which was a questionnaire which was given at the end of the wire bending session, actually had, had extra element of question to assess the student's uh, usage and also perception of the video. So here are the details of statistical analysis that we use for each of the objectives, and we actually use SPSS version 25 for our analysis of the quantitative data. Audience, now let's focus on our findings. 13 male and 27 female participated in this study. The average age was 21.8 plus or minus 0.2 years. The intra observer examiner for all the six examiner was greater than 0.9, indicating excellent agreement within the examiner for each of the six components. This slide explains our first objective, which was to compare the mean wire bending score between the live demonstration and also flip classroom. As shown in the yellow highlight here, you can see that for two of the wire bending component, which was Adam class and so Z spring, it was statistically significant in in, this, in terms of the score for the where the score for flip classroom was higher than the live demonstration. Meanwhile, for the other component, there was no difference between the live demonstration and also the flip classroom cohorts. This slide explains the finding of our second objective, where we wanted to compare the mean wire bending score. Uh, we want to see that we want to see the association of formative assessment on the mean wire bending score for both cohorts. 
and you can see that both live demonstration and flip classroom cohort showed significant increase in wire bending score over the six wire bending exercises. And this shows that formative assessment have significantly uh, contributed to significant increase in score over time for both cohort. This shows that formative assessment was very effective to increase the student score over time. So this slide actually explains our third objective, which was to investigate the frequency and correlation or between usage of online video with students' wire bending score. Based on table two here, you can see that there's a mixed distribution of students who watch the video in full length, watch the video more than once, practice the wire bending procedure along the video, and also use the playing features of the video. In terms of satisfaction of the quality of the video, there were also reports of inadequate assets, lack of satisfaction of the video, and preference from video from other side. Overall, no statistical significant correlation was found between the wire bending score and also utilization of the video. Now, I would like to discuss the finding of our last objective, which was on the student satisfaction of our both teaching method, which was flipped classroom and live demonstration with formative assessment. And based on T0 questionnaire, you can see that both cohort were satisfied with their learning method with positive mean score for all the domains. There was a significant difference between live demonstration and also flip classroom cohort for two domains, which was the demonstration method and also the wire bending task. The live demonstration cohort expressed higher favor for the demonstration method received and overall satisfaction of the teaching method. However, flip classroom cohort was significantly more satisfied with infrastructure and materials provided. Overall, T0 and T1 questionnaire, which was the questionnaire after the first wire bending and also the last wire bending, showed that students were satisfied with both teaching methods, although the live demonstration was rated significantly higher than our flipped classroom cohorts. Now, I would like to discuss our findings. In this study, we found that Flip classroom was more effective in transferring the skill of wire bending for Adam class and also Z spring. Adam class was the first wire bending task of a new and inexperienced and unskilled student, whereas Z spring was one of the most complicated wire bending tasks. Meanwhile, for the remaining four other types of wire bending, which require less wire bending skill, our finding was in agreement with Al Katani et al. 2015, which reported that. Both live demonstration and thick classroom are both equally effective in transferring the skill of orthodontic wire bending. According to Patrick 2013, formative assessment promote personalized learning by providing feedback to the teachers and students to make any required improvement. It also promotes the students to engage in a self-reflective process and work on improving their wire bending skills. On the other hand, the improved score might be reflected as the consequences that students have acquired skills with increased practicing of wire bending that they were able to improve in performance over time. We also noticed that not all students utilize the video provided to them in the flip classroom teaching method. And, but however, the usage of video has no association with their performance. It might be that the students actually picked up concept of wire bending through watching parts that they need to learn and not necessarily the whole video prepared. The students also had opportunity to ask the teachers during the classroom session, which might help them to understand concept they missed from the video. Our finding is again in agreement with Al Katani et al. 2015, where both methods are effective, provided the instru instructions were actually well driven. In terms of classroom arrangement, only at the later stage that flip classroom cohort found that classroom can be conductive as compared to live demonstration. According to Lowe and Hugh 2017, students require some time to familiarize with new learning approach, which is the flip learning, before truly appreciate and embrace the new teaching method introduced to them. As for our limitation of this study, ideally, a control group with students undergoing the orthodontic wire bending session without formative assessment should be included in to investigate the effectiveness of formative itself, assessment itself. However, it was deemed ethically inappropriate to withhold any students from possible benefit of personalized learning in this cohort. 
as for our recommendation, we noticed that a large proportion of our students were not satisfied with the quality of the video provided on their online learning platform. Suggestions in include involving students during development of educational videos to incorporate elements that would attract the end users. Digital literacy is required for effective video development and further educational technical support is crucial to assist in appropriate video integration in clinical teaching. In a nutshell, both live demonstration and flip classroom are equally effective in teaching method in transferring practical skills of orthodontic wire bending. Continuous formative assessment and feedback as a form of personalized learning showed positive improvement in acquiring new skills for both cohort. In terms of novelty and impact to the society and community, to the best of our knowledge, no study investigated the effect of live demonstration and flipped classroom supplemented with continuous formative assessment during undergraduate teaching of orthodontic wire bending. And based on our finding, continuous formative assessment has resulted in increase in the score over time. Thus, dental schools can incorporate this teaching method in their undergraduate cur curriculum. This method of implementing formative assessment into the teaching is not only limited to the field of dentistry, it can be also integrated in other fields so that as a teacher, we actually have continuous formative assessment where we follow the students closely to improve the score over time. I would like to acknowledge the students of year three who actually participated in this study. The lecturer, the technicians who were involved in the both live demonstration and also flipped classroom teaching and also all the lecturers from the Department of Orthodontic Faculty of Dentistry. And last but not least, UM Little Grant for funding this research. These are my references. With that, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sanita. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, now I also know that in bending you have Adams and Z and <laughs> other names. Yes. Thanks for sharing uh, a piece of that history with us. Thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, one of our evaluators. Thank you, Doctor. Congratulations on your effort. Did you conduct validation process on the assessment instrument? Do you conduct reflection process as the semester or research was conducted? You can look at it, look at the question at the live Q&A section if you need to look at it again. The last one. Sorry, I can't see. Can you repeat okay. the question for I'll, me? I'll, I'll read the question again. Okay. Did you conduct validation process on the assessment instrument? Validation, okay. Our assessment was actually, we actually had a rubrics which was for each of the items because I was in this study, we actually had six wire components mm -hmm. and we actually assessed the wire components. So this rubrics that we developed was actually developed by all the 11 orthodontists mm -hmm. and it was actually been uh, vetted for clarity of the uh, question, each rubrics itself. So once we were very clear and then only be employed in this study, but the rubric for the first wire component was actually adapted from the previous study. But meanwhile, for the other wire components, we actually did it on our own. Okay. Uh, the second one was, did you conduct reflection process as the semester or research conducted? Okay. Uh, we actually have another continuation of this study, which is actually on the phase two on focus group discussion. We actually, actually uh, selected two groups of students. We conducted two focus groups uh, session, one with the top scorers and one with bottom scorers. And we actually assessed their uh, perception on the teaching method itself within flight demonstration and also flipped classroom. And we also explored their opinion on formative assessment as well. And we note, uh, we are actually, there's only a second part of my presentation. And based on that finding, we found that students actually really appreciate this elements of formative assessment and personalized feedback given to them, those who scored below par, because they feel that by lecturers following them closely, they it boosts their performance to perform better. So they know where is their weaknesses so that they can improve further. And they actually preferred uh, live demonstration because of they can view the video and they actually suggested to use mixed mode of live and also the flip classroom itself. 
whether you have a live demonstration, but you also give them a video recording to them together with personalized learning, which is formative assessment. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sarita. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay. We will move to